Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, you know, I, I've been sitting here thinking about, you know, what kind of to call all of these videos and stuff. And the thing that keeps coming back to me is just calling it uh, God's timing. Um, you know, I speak a lot about that each each and every time when somebody's telling me, "Hey, I'm running late." Uh, you know, not really. You know, if we're going off of God's time then you truly are never late you know there's never a wrong time to regroup yourself you know depression are you having anxiety are you de you know d depression goes into many different areas you, you know you look at it going you don't feel worthy enough Is somebody that you may be with doesn't treat you like you're that uh, special person don't take second you know you are equally important to god he created all of us through jesus he accepts us all you know there is nobody above you in jesus eye you know so see yourself as important don't don't go to that time in life where you feel that you constantly have to be a certain way with people or they're not going to like you or they're not going to want to be with you. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how you treat people. It doesn't matter uh, what you do. You can you can be the best person in the world. You can do everything. You can get up and cook. You can clean. You can put all the stuff away. You can go grocery shopping. You can make it where your husband's life is totally perfect and he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to mow the lawn. You know, you could he can, uh, during football season, you can record every football season, have all of his friends over, and if whatever they're going to do, they're going to do it, people. You know, you can't blame yourself, but you also can't sell yourself short either. You know, so, so let's just keep it real here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world out here today that uh, we're, we either agree or we're going to disagree on. But there's no sense in getting in arguments about it. There's no sense in going into areas to where it causes this gray area life. You know, I refuse to not give God's truth. So I'm probably not the person that it's going to be so likely to hear about transgenders, uh, going into bathrooms and stuff. Uh, if, if you are, if you're born with a man's parts and a man's insides and you can't get pregnant, you're a man, go to the men's room. I don't, it, uh, I'm not saying if you want to play Halloween and dress up as a woman, that's on you, but you, you, you know, why are you constantly screaming? Screaming about stuff and why why is the transgenders and the gay rights and all this stuff you know you have a whole month of it and we're and we're supposed to accept it but we bring christ into the equation and everybody wants to shut us down you know uh just like youtube you know they can pretty much pull the plug anytime they want on anything that i post but um I, I don't sit here and, and badmouth YouTube. I, I've watched YouTube for many years. And uh, I am thankful that they allow us to put the stuff on there. And, you know, but when God has his plans, he's He's going to have it done, whether it's YouTube or it's going to be, uh, you know, something else. Um, but what am I harming here? I'm not harming anybody. You s clearly can see the messages that I'm putting on there. Um, you don't have to watch them. So why come against him? You know, I'm terrible. Sorry, my, my window curtains is <laughs> kind of pulled up at the bottom because I got my GPS. I didn't, I didn't uh, disconnect it. And what you're seeing on on my face is the shadows of trucks, you know, coming out of the fuel aisle. But um, and one person asked me on a comment, "What is what is this thing above me? It's a ladder to get you into the top bunk." It actually folds down uh one day i'll have to show you around in, inside the truck area right, right now i'm in a uh, uh, sleeper berth but um you know i i don't have all the answers you know I, I don't claim to be a psychiatrist i don't claim to be any of these things 
in life, a doctor or anything like that. But I do have hard facts of life that I can share with you that may help you. You know, I survived four attempts at suicide, two of them, which legally I was dead. And, uh, there, you know, and, and the crazy part, uh, only one of them, I was under the influence of alcohol. And, uh, but the, the thing you can't explain is I was totally sober when I came back. <laughs> and, uh, and if, and if, and if you want to say that that's not possible, or you want to say that it's because I'm drunk that I seen what I seen, um, well, you know, you can believe what you want. You know, you can also believe that the Easter Bunny is going to come next week, and you can also believe that Santa Claus is going to pick up the Easter Bunny. But we believed that that stuff when we were children, right? You know, but look, here's here's something. There's you can believe in something that you can't see. We believe the wind because we feel it. So it makes it more legit, I guess. It's a better word to say. But let me ask you this. When you were a child, majority of people, some people didn't get stuff the next morning. And we were always taught, you know, you're on a naughty list or the good list. But what if you were good? See, it, it kind of, it's horrible. If you wake up and you were good and you got nothing, um, it, it's kind of what the devil does. He, he breaks us down in any way that he thinks he can break us down and tear us down. It makes us feel like we're not important. It makes us feel like we're not good enough, right? You know, how many times in school did you think that you wasn't good enough because somebody picked you last and it made you feel bad? Well, you know, I always had a weight problem. You know, I not so much when I was little, but by the time I got in, uh, fifth grade on, you know, I went back with my father in sixth grade and I went to a school and I wasn't liked very well. I was kind of the new kid. I was the chubby kid. Uh, when your dad really doesn't let you go outside, you know, and naturally, you know, you wake, you know, on the weekends, I was up till one, two o'clock in the morning. We'd watch him big Chuck and little John make these big sandwiches. And, you know, I thought life was great. I had some toys. There was a, a, pardon me one second. There was a toy store on the, on, right around the corner, like where we lived, we lived on the fourth floor of this apartment building. And there was a book binder place that made books and stuff right in front of us. So right behind that, like looking out the window, if you go beyond that to where the main boulevard was, there was a toy store. Well, whether the guy did it or not, I don't know, because, you know, I was always kind of shy and embarrassed. I had a real bad uh, speech problem from a child growing up. But, uh, so I would dumpster dive, per se, and I, I found stuff in there, like toys that was still in, in wrappers. Some stuff wasn't. Some stuff was brought back and broken. I didn't care. You know, as a young child, I'd hook a radio flyer red wagon to the back of my bike and I'd ride around our neighborhood and just find radios, whatever. It didn't matter. Toys, game boards. I didn't care what it was. Um, I'd put it in my wagon. I'd take it back. And I, if it was broken or whatever, I'd take pieces out of there. I, I would make stuff for my army men out of stuff like that. Whatever. You know, it's a, uh, uh, you know, uh, some people said that we were poor. I don't know what poor really was back then. Um, some people say that I'm poor today because I don't have the luxury life and stuff. But I, I'm, I'm rich. People, you know, I have two automobiles, uh, both under the year 2010. Um, I got food on my table every day. I got clean clothes. I my, all my bills are paid. I have some money in the bank. Um, I I can go out to eat when I want. Uh, you know, I I I believe I'm rich. You know, I, you go to some countries where they don't even have a car. Um, 
but I, you know, I'm okay. You know, um, one time I've had all kinds of stuff. You know, I had lawn equipment. I had uh, motorcycles. Uh, had money and I lost money. I grew up without money. I grew up, you know, cherishing what I had. So if we weigh all this out, where I'm going with all this is, and I know, just bear with me if you do catch on some of these videos, that uh, I like to give you some history about things also, and a little bit about myself, you know, because you can re if you can relate to what I'm telling you, you then you're more likely to listen to how someone got through it. I'm not going to listen to some professor that was spoon fed because it doesn't doesn't do anything for me. I want to hear the truth out of someone that has lived a lifestyle that understands me or her. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, but as long as I can relate to it, I understand it. And, it, and then I'll, you know, that tends to draw me in even closer. But, uh, if we can believe in these things and we can understand and relate to Santa Claus and all these things, that's faith. We went to sleep knowing something was going to be under that tree or however you received it. You know, it's faith, faith, faith. I can't say it enough. You, you went in out of faith knowing something was going to be there. You know, I, growing up, I didn't know who Jesus was. I you know, we went to uh, this one church a couple times, but that was about it. The only thing I can tell you about that church is afterwards we got some milk and donuts. Guess I didn't learn a whole lot there, huh? You know, and we made some pretty cool stuff in uh, Sunday school, which some pictures and stuff like that. I always like coloring. I always like doing things like that. Um, you know, but you got to look at it going, what are you looking for in life? Are, are you upset? Are you uh, out of peace? You know, is, is your life crumbling underneath of you? You know, looking out the windows today, it's, it's difficult. You know, it's difficult to grow up as a teenager, especially in this transgender era and stuff that they're forcing down our throats. I disagree with it. If you're okay with yourself and you're okay with saying you you was a woman, now you want to be a man or a man used to be a woman type thing or whatever the situation is. I, I don't know if I just step backwards or whatever, but, you, you know, you get the point. But why are you trying to shove it down our throats? You know, you have a gay pride month, which is this month. We got Black History Month. We have uh, uh, Asian time now. We got... Uh, Hispanic, we have, I don't know, it's just month after month after month, women's things, this and that. But, what is White History Month? Where's any special favor for us, per se? Because we were the bad people back in the day, I guess, is what everybody's saying. You know, we were the bad ones. But, um, I wasn't. You know, I can't help what my ancestors did, but if I go all the way back to my ancestors, uh, let's take a take a five second break with me and just run backwards with me. Okay, my ancestors start with Adam and Eve. I then God flooded the earth, and as God flooded the earth, we are descendants from Noah. And if you go off your scientific belief, which I'm never going to go down that avenue with you because I just think it's really totally ridiculous, all of it, you know, nor do I think I, I don't agree with all religions. But let me tell you one thing. Religion doesn't, it didn't save me. Jesus Christ saved me. Not a church. Jesus Christ. I don't need to go to a confession box, which is Catholic. Uh, I don't think Mary is above Jesus. I, I, I don't. She just said in the Bible that they will see me as great. Yes, yeah, she was great. God chose her to have Jesus. That's it. 
I'm not going to go to some father and say, Father, please forgive me. And he's going to tell me whatever whatever their thing is. I always say it wrong and it offends everybody, the Catholic thing. So I'm not even going to go there and butcher it. And I'm not trying to upset anybody. I'm just trying to speak the truth. Mary is Mary. She's not above Jesus. Jesus wasn't just a prophet. Jesus, if Jesus was such a prophet... Then why does the Bible speak of them all the way through from the beginning? You know, I I even come against people that say that, you know, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're three different entities. Well, no, Jesus got Jesus was born flesh. He had to relearn the Father, the same as we had to learn Him, and, and to, through Him we learned who who the Father was. But it says in the very beginning of the Bible, I I got two of them that I read from the spirit of God, which is Jesus flowed through and made creation. It doesn't say myself and my son and the spirit of us went to do the creation in the beginning of John. Let me flip to John real quick here. Um, says right here in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in him was life and in the life was the light of men and that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. So saying right there, that's John the Baptist that was sent to be a witness for Jesus. But you see what I'm saying? It says he was sent. It didn't say nothing about a spirit beyond Jesus at this point. So... You know, again, I don't care if you believe in the Trinity. I don't care if you, you do or you don't. I don't. Personally, I don't. Because when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and went into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted by Lucifer, Satan, I can give you many, many names that I'm not going to because I don't like giving names of the spiritual uh, the satanic realm and, and yes I do know them and yes I know a lot of the demons names when you grow, grow up in a, a household like that there isn't much I mean there there's some stuff that uh, scary movies uh, couldn't even get that graphic and I mean there's still days that I wake up in nightmares of the, of the stuff that I lived through But um, uh, what I'm doing is drinking uh, a drink of water because my throat for the last couple of weeks has been like so scratchy and hurt. So I, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, so here we go. Jesus accepted the God's spirit into him and they united as one. The same as we had to learn here on earth. God didn't send Jesus with a silver spoon, even though Jesus could have anything he wanted. You know, Jesus spoke to Pontius Pilate and said, you know, he says, are you a king? And he says, who do you say I am? You know, if this was my kingdom, my people would come and defend me. You know, why did the people start yelling, crucify him? Because you're de and then a couple of days prior to that, he fed thousands. We're dealing with two different crowds. The same as we deal in life with different people. One minute they're your friends. One minute they're talking behind your back. They're doing all these things. Well, the people has never changed. But let me stay on topic here. So Jesus was filled with the Spirit of God. God, Jesus' Spirit with him. Jesus goes out into the wilderness. Doesn't say anything about a Holy Spirit. Nothing. 
Their spirit becomes one. Jesus then goes into the wilderness. And here's where the problem comes of today's society here. Society says we can be accepted of all things. You know, the devil doesn't have power, you know, blah, 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 blah. But the devil is God of this earth. And people is going to come against it. And you may be going, okay, where is he going with this? Well, here's why. Because the Bible says when he finally tried everything, you know, uh, if you truly are the son of man, then turn these rocks. You know, I think it depends on what translation is, either stones or rocks, whatever, into bread. And the Lord quickly gave scripture saying, man, it can't eat on bread alone. You know, you need more. So, at the very end, he takes them to the highest mountain, and they look out, and they see everything. The kingdom, they see buildings, they see everything that you can possibly see from a top of a mountain, whatever they were looking at. He says, bow down and worship and praise me, and I shall give you all these things. Well, Jesus never said no you have no power or authority to do that, only my father. He never said that. But he did say, don't tempt. Don't tempt my father. So, you wonder why Lucifer, Satan, is so good at deceiving people? Because he was there at the beginning also. If you go in the book of Job, where God is speaking, what took you so long to get here? He says, I was going to, to and fro, up and down. See, Satan goes daily to heaven to, to deceive you. And God either allows it or he doesn't allow it. You also got to look at this. You also have to look at where we are in this particular age and, and what's going on around us. You know, um, uh, let me find it real quick. Right here. It says, uh, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to dissolution. And every city of the house is divided against himself and will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will the kingdom stand? If I cast out demons in Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can you enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. He will, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. Listen. Clearly, Lucifer is out to rob, kill, and destroy you. It's that simple. You know, he wants to overwhelm you. He wants you to think everything is free. Look at the stimuluses. People, you know, you realize we taking these stimuluses and taking these checks and taking this money, taking these buyout payments, we all think it's great. Don't complain when gas prices rise to $7 a gallon then. Don't complain when your food prices go up. But what we need to do is join hands. I don't care, white, purple, pink, green, Asian, Caucasian, uh, American, Africans. I don't, I don't care what you call yourselves. I say we all need to get together. We need to form together. We need to, first of all, come to prayer. 9-11 was the biggest, biggest United States play of chaos that I've ever seen that we believed. And uh, I, 
one day I, I will speak on the nine and eleven thing again, and uh, you know, unbelievable the stuff people believe because we watch it on TV and when we think it's true. That's how about that commercial? Well, it's on the internet. It must be true. Well, man puts that information in there, people. And just because the government tells you to wear a mask, well, what about all the years prior to that? What about when you are wearing masks? Are you out there wiping? Which, did you wipe your doorknobs off? Did you take your fruits home and wash your fruits off after it came off of a truck? After it was loaded onto a truck? After it was taken off of a truck? Transferred somewhere else? Transferred into, into the store that other people moved but before they went in there they didn't Perel their hands 10,000 times you know is that Perel alcohol free because you can catch Perel on fire you can you get too much of it on you and you walk by there you you, you may be a, a walking candle before it's over but we become selfish you know we're running around stockpiling all this stuff uh, newsflash I, I just want to throw this out there to you you can buy all this nonsense buckets, and I always said I'm not going to say names or places. A couple times I have in some of these videos, but uh, only because if I say president, today's president, you know who I'm talking about. So I'm not going to cover that up. Uh, it's not that I'm covering up. I, I just don't believe in bashing people at all. You know, I, I used to. Oh, I was great at bashing people, uh, but... It shows where Jesus, had, you know, how he changes me. You know, I came to Jesus dirty, rotten, unclean, and he took each day to mold and sculpt me. But, so where we run down this avenue is this. You take this money, you take these stimuluses, food shortages, gas rising, the Lord spoke all these things to me a while back that these things were coming and they're going to increase because they, this stuff has to. But whose fault is it? Because we're believing these stuff. We believe the COVID. We're allowing them to shut us down. We're allowing them to put fear over us because we keep looking out the windows. We keep you know, believing this stuff. You know, now teachers are going into school teaching it's okay to have mixed feelings, whether you're a man or whether you're a boy or a girl. I'm allowed to tell you about my livelihood. Well, good night, man. If this would have been 10 years ago, them teachers would have been arrested. And the parents and stuff would have made sure of it. Because now we're so dang gone afraid to walk up and, and, and say something. Because somebody's going to be offended. Somebody's going to try to sue us. Someone's going to go into a cake place because you're gay and you want a cake. And, they, and, the, and you're going to come against their Christian beliefs. I got a big problem with it. Don't go into a church then. Don't go in somewhere and trying to sue somebody because they don't want to make you a cake. Get over it. I didn't commit the first sin Adam did am I guilty of that too because I'm being real with you if this is childish black lives matter do you understand what black lives matter really truly stands for unbelievable look it up people look it up I mean it's sick I mean there's Af uh, sorry American Africans that are even coming against it what does that tell you you know the whole Ferguson thing, there was a lady, uh, I'll, I'll never forget it. I don't watch too much news. And once in a while, I'll catch it. That's why it would be a lie to say if I don't watch news. Because once in a while, I do come across things at a truck stop or something that catches my eye. And I'll I'll stand there, out of, most of it out of shock. But there was, there was a lady in Ferguson when they were doing all that riding over the, the incident that happened. But... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that a cop would go to that extent. But also, you know, when you hear what the guy did trying to rob something, he's guilty of whatever. I don't care. I'm not the judge. I don't care if the man robs 72 places. You don't have to kill people. You don't have to hit people. You don't have to use br brute force to physically harm someone. You're already harming them. You're stealing from their livelihood. You're stealing for something they worked very hard to get. 
there was a American African lady that had a beauty shop that the windows got busted out and stuff in there. And I remember her coming on there speaking. Uh, so I think if I remember right, don't quote me on it. It was either her or somebody else said that they destroyed their car also by jumping up and down on the cars and stuff and busting out windows. Unbelievable. You know, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that this is what society's coming to and we think this is okay. Because truth be known, so many people were getting paid and busload in by a, a bad person. But yet he sits over there in, in luxury land and laughs about it. Well, who else does that? Lucifer. If you think he's not walking among this earth, if you think these demons haven't been here, they also got cast out with Lucifer. You know, the, there's a spot in the Bible where uh, an unclean guy was going on and Jesus, you know, walks up there and uh, the spirit says, what do you want with the son of man? You know, and Jesus tells him to be silent and uh, he kept going on. He goes, you know, cast us into those swine. Well, if Jesus rebukes them, they don't want to go back to hell, basically. And hell is horrible. But look, the demons don't even want to go back. But how do they get to know you so well? Anybody ever really put a lot of thought into this? Because they stand back and they watch over and over and over your routines, your patterns. You know, uh, God says, you know, I had a family member says, uh, you're, you're not supposed to judge people. I ain't judging nobody. I'm, I'm looking at your fruits. Don't claim you to be something and then turn out to be another, you know, uh, you know, into another way. You know, you can wear your rock and roll T-shirts all you want. You can listen to ACDC Highway to Hell because I used to blast that thing going down the road. I had big speakers in the back of my back seat, you know, and I thought I was the, the biggest coolest person out there you know my reputation and all this stuff you know but really to be honest it just shows how ignorant i was i was on satan's highway to hell hotel california you ever listen to the lyrics you can check in anytime you like but you can never leave that's hell people you can check in you're already checked in you know uh my thing is you know, the whole thing with this gay rights thing is, you know, I I don't understand it. You claim that you're gay, you like the same sex, but the people you date, if you're a woman, they look like a man. And the man dates someone that starts acting like a woman and starts favoring a woman. Is there not a, somebody else, please help me that, can you not see that that's crazy? I I know quite a bit of people that's in the gay lifestyle. And uh, back one time she was talking to me and uh, she says, you know, some of the stuff you make a lot of sense. I didn't really think about it. And I said, you know, we got talking about other issues. And I, and I said, you know, you, you, you think about the sexual part of it. Are you really physically connected with this person? And she says, no, not really. She goes, but the weird part is we use a man's part in our sexual activity. And I'm like, that makes no freaking sense to me. Think about what you're saying here. You just are confused, basically. You're allowing the devil to control you. And let me tell you. I know every time I do one of these videos, the devil's coming because when you serve the devil well and you buck up against him, he tempted Jesus. He came at Jesus. I know he's going to come after me. He's been doing it all, all my life. And uh, the crazy part of it is it's true. But I I'm a little bit wiser today. You know, I'm at peace today. I'm in joy. Do I get upset still? Yes. There's, there is times that I'm really upset. I'm upset because the way people come against me. I'm upset because, uh, you know, my kids alone, 
you know, they don't know a lot about my younger days, but they know what they went through when I was married to their mother. And instead of coming up and asking me, you're just going to assume crap. And you're going to take other people's word that uh, wants to crucify. Well, hey, they did the same thing to Jesus. It's the other crowd that yelled crucified. Remember that. You can crucify me all you want. I don't care. I don't need you in my life. I don't need negativity people. I don't need people that's going to come against me and bash me down. Because you're cowards just like the devil that you serve. You're cowards. Because you can't step up and be a person and talk to someone in their face. Instead, you're going to be a coward because you're afraid of the truth. You're afraid of the truth when the truth is going to come out. You know, I've been in so many fake churches that I've watched people hold phones and Google them and text message back and forth and laughing and carry it on. Why a pastor is supposed to be up there preaching, but the pastor don't do nothing about it. You're the shepherd. It's not so great when people fire back at you, is it? The same people that took me to court. And I proved them all wrong. Could have prosecuted the one for giving certain things that weren't legal to give children. Could have prosecuted them. But I chose not to. I walked in there that morning into that courtroom in the hallway. And I had a witness with me. Says, you do realize we're out here for a reason. I said, what does that mean? Uh, you're probably going to be arrested. I am? Okay. Notice I said I am? <laughs> the great I am. You can't do nothing that God says or hasn't said yet. See, the couple days, the day prior to all this happening, uh, I could have got all kinds of charges kidnapping i could have got uh then fleeing one of my children off this church property you know there there's so many wrongs but it's funny how when the reversal because people take things out of context you know i'm not the best speller i'm not embarrassed of it i used to be you know when you've gone through so many elementary schools growing up like I have, you know, uh, really, to be honest, kindergarten and first grade and sixth grade is the only grade that I didn't bounce around. The only reason why first grade, because I got held back and I found out later on my mom held me back because I wasn't up to par, because I wasn't talking. I wasn't interacting with people because it would take me 15, 20 seconds just to get two words out. Because I have a bad speech problem. You know. But. Look what God does. God changes. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. God changes. And he will change you. If you allow him to let you be changed. You may think that I got hatred towards my children. That's not the truth. I'm not even going to let to see the reason why I'm telling you all this stuff and I'm adding stuff to it because I want to give you a second to think about it. And then I'm going to come back with different ways. I love my children. I wouldn't have went through the nonsense that I went through. And, you know, I do regret some of that. I wish now I wouldn't have done that. 